I'd like to <laughs> opening roll, please. Let the minutes reflect that adequate notice of the holding of this regular meeting of the Howell Township Council was provided for in the following manner. By the posting of a copy of said notice upon the bulletin board in the Township Municipal Building on January 3rd, 2019. By the copy of said notice to the Tri-Town News and Star-Ledger for information and publication on January 3rd, 2019. By the filing of a copy of said form of notice in the Township Clerk's Office on January 3rd, 2019. The public will be allowed to attend and will be allowed to participate pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Law. The public is reminded that civility and decorum will be maintained during the meeting. Any contracts awarded at this meeting or between now and the next meeting will be required to comply with the requirements of Public Law 1975. Chapter 127, NJAC 17, colon 27. In accordance with the Fire Prevention Code, be advised that this facility is designed with emergency exits for your safety. Upon exiting the meeting room, they are to your left and to the right. Furthermore, smoking is not permitted in the municipal building. Please take note that this meeting is being videotaped for possible future broadcast on Howell Television. Roll call, Mr. Bonovich. Absent this evening. He's excused. M Ms. Richmond? She's excused. Mr. Russo? Here. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell? Here. Mayor Berger? Here. The executive session minutes from tonight's meeting can be disclosed to the public when the need for confidentiality no longer exists. I'd like to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. Thank you. <laughs> May I have a motion to accept the minutes of June 11? Motion, um, to, oh, go ahead. Uh, motion to accept the June 11 minutes. May I have a second? Second. Roll call. Mr. Russo? Yes. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes. Okay. Um, do we have any reports from the officials this evening? Yeah. Mayor, I if I could recommend doing the recognition first. Okay. <clears throat> sure. Do you want to come down and we'll... Good evening. We have a recognition honoring Shane Ritzma. Is that correct? Almost there. Whereas Howell resident Shane Rista is Howell, school, uh, Howell High School student and captain of the wrestling team. And whereas just a few of the star athletes, many wrestling accomplishments includes 123 win, character wins, three times district champion, two times regional champion, two times state place winner, second and sixth place, first team all shore, all Mammoth, and all division. Coming from someone who has no idea what I'm talking about, it sounds really big. Is it really big? <laughs> it's a big deal? It seems like it. I don't even, you know. It's pretty big. <laughs> it's pretty big, It's huh? pretty big. Well, there's a lot of more whereases and where ours, but um, wow, good on you, dude, man. It's pretty amazing. Please come on up. Whereas, but perhaps 
Even more impressive is Shane's drive to help others. After the tragic suicide of his uncle Walter, a US Marine who served in Iraq and suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder, Shane created Change the Statistics, an organization to help people dealing with the issues of suicide and bullying. You really are amazing. Whereas Shane's project has deservedly gained the attention of the media with features on CNN's Positive Athlete Program and News 12 New Jersey, the organization hosts events to raise money for those who are suffering with suicidal thoughts but cannot afford to get the help that they need. Whereas a visit to the Instagram page of Change the Statistics presents the organization's message of kindness, compassion, and breaking the stigma of mental illness. Inspirational quotes, including reminders that we never know what someone else might be going through, will fill the page with statements of hope, inclusion, resilience, and love. Let it I will say, let it be resolved that I, Teresa Berger, on behalf of the governing body, do hereby honor you, Major Lee, Shane Rietzma, for his selfless work helping others and being an inspiration to all. This gentleman deserves a huge round of applause. Should we um, do public hearing? Uh, next, uh, if the clerk can report, we have uh, several changes to the agenda for tonight. Sure. I'd like to read into the record the following um, changes to the agenda. Uh, we have added the following resolutions. R-19-188, 9A37, authorized developers agreement for townhomes at Eagle Oaks. Uh, R-19-242, 9A38, Authorized Developers Agreement for Major Subdivision, Block 14, Lot 17. R-19-243, 9A39, Authorize Approval to Submit a Grant Application and Execute a Grant Contract with the New Jersey Department of Transportation. Uh, R-19-244, 9A40, Authorize Approval to Submit a Grant Application and Execute a Grant Contract with the New Jersey Department of Transportation. R-19-245, 9A41, authorize award of contract, professional consulting engineering services related to the 2019 drainage program. Also added was ordinance O-19-38, item number 11.4, approve the acquisition of easement rights in portions of the properties located at block 144, lot 128, and block 144, lot 114. <coughs> and removed from the agenda was Resolution R-19-228, 9A23, Authorized Award of Contract, Brush Grinding and Wood Chip Removal. I'm sorry, Mayor, and also the uh, items on the agenda, there were one, two, three, five resolutions, the uh, Chapter 159, uh, Items 9A4, 9A5, 9A25, 9A26, and 9A27 because they require four, four votes. Okay, say them again. Items 9A4, 9A5. 9A, so 9A4 is off then, correct? Okay, 9A5. I believe it's going, they're going to be carried to the next meeting. Right. Okay. 9A4, 9A5, 9A25, 26, and 27. The other uh, ordinance that you want wanted for this evening, I think that should be voted on by all five members. 
The acquisition of property? No. The, um, the ordinance that we talked about inside. Mayor, if I can comment, um, there's a timeliness issue with this. Uh, if we fail to pass it, this project is going to cost us approximately $1.4 million more. I'm not sure we're talking about the same thing. The ordinance that's on for the must connect for the water? <laughs> Which one? That's certainly not what I'm talking about. I, I believe you're referring to 11.1. Okay, that's only scheduled for introduction tonight, not adoption. Okay, that's fine then. It's up to you though. That's fine. <clears throat> You're done? Okay, so do you want to go to public? Yep. Uh, next up, I'll provide some background information um, regarding the shared service for the tax collector mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> position. 2013, New Jersey implemented the Common Sense Shared Services Pilot Program Act. Mm -hmm quite the mouthful. Uh, the act was created with purpose of removing impediments to the sharing of services uh, for certain tenured employees. Uh, initially, it was created as a pilot program, only allowing it in certain counties. Uh, in November of 2018, Governor Murphy signed a bill uh, adding uh, Monmouth and Atlantic counties to that pilot program. So this is relatively uh, newly available to us. Coincidentally, uh, Mayor Daly from Farmingdale and I have been meeting to discuss various shared services. Uh, there's a few others that we have in the works for later in the year. Um, uh, coincidentally, our tax collector had announced her uh, impending retirement. Uh, I had discussed this with Mayor Daly. Uh, they had a need for a tax collector as well, so that's where this idea came from. Uh, I'd like to note that both Mayor Daly and Council President Romano are here in the audience uh, to support you know, our governing body's actions. Um, as required by this act, we have provided notice of a public hearing two weeks in advance, as well as a copy of the shared service agreement being presented to any affected employees. Um, based on our calculations, the first year of this agreement will result in a savings to Farmingdale of about $1,500 and a savings to Howell Township of almost $30,000. The initial agreement will be signed for a period of four years. There is a termination clause for either governing body to opt out uh, with proper notice. Um, and at this time, I would ask if the governing body has any questions about the agreement. Um, if there's none, I would recommend you open it up for any public questions or comments. Just quickly, um, what would be the termination, 90 days? Uh, the shared service agreement requires 180 days notice. Okay. Oh, and the savings you said, uh, Brian, 30000 to Howell? That's correct. Okay. I have no questions. Okay. At this time, we will open the portion of the meeting mm -hmm. to the public. Abraham Chasanoff. Mayor, we have to do a public hearing specific to oh, this. Oh, forgive me. Um, I believe most of those were for regular comments. Well, it just doesn't say it, so. We're opening this up for the shared service agreement. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Barbara Dixon, 62A, Piazza Vittoria, Freehold, New Jersey. Okay, I'm going to ask you several questions. Will, how will this work? Is the tax office in Howell going to be closed and move to Farmingdale with the employees? No. How is this going to work? 
Uh, this is only for one position. That is the designated tax collector. Uh, we still have a staff of personnel that would be um, staffing our office during all the hours that they've always done. Uh, this employee would spend a majority of their time here in Howell. Um, obviously, we have a much larger uh, load of the, the work to be done, and we're estimating probably anywhere between one and four hours per week in Farmingdale for their needs. But that's only for the one person. This is going to be a employee for both townships. They're an employee of Farmingdale. Now. No, no, no. They would be an employee of Farmingdale. We're contracting with Farmingdale for this employee's services. Um, okay. Anybody else in the tax office? going to be furloughed, terminated, changed, or retitled? No, there's only one employee that would be affected who has announced her retirement. Um, and we will still come to Howell Township to pay our taxes, correct? Yes. And what about the people in Farmingdale? Who will, who will they go to to pay their taxes? Nothing will change for them. They'll continue to pay them in Farmingdale as they do now. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, and the salary will be paid by who? By Farmingdale. You're not going to pay this person's salary? Correct. Why? That's the shared service agreement. They're an employee of Farmingdale. They're responsible for paying salary, benefits, or related taxes. We contract with Farmingdale to pay them a set dollar amount. For the person's services? Yes. Uh, all right, now, um, okay, Hal Township has a heavier tax load, I'm sure, a heavier tax load of people more than Farmingdale does. So on uh, tax collection days, when you get a bulk of people coming in, uh, how is that going to work if we have a crush of people and they need people? How is that going to work? I mean, you can't divide one person in half and send them to two offices. Well, as I said, the remainder of our staff in our tax collector's office will still be there. And they're capable and of doing whatever this other person has been doing yes. all these years. Generally, the tax collector here in Howell doesn't routinely accept the payments themselves, although they are able to. We have other staff members that handle that direct. Okay, uh, and the uh, and the papers for the freeze, the, the property freeze and everything else, that's got to be handed in specifically from the PT, whatever booklets we get from the state that has to be filled out and signed by us and then given to your tax office for your people to sign and do. Will that be still done here by a, uh, an employee of Hal Township yes, that will. will be able to verify these tax forms that have a time limit on them? Yes. As so, I said, nothing will change for okay. the residents coming to make their payments so, and so conduct business. So we won't lose anything because Farmingdale needs the people, and we need the people, and the tax forms have to be done, and, well, they need the people more because it's their employee. Once again, nothing will change for the residents except realizing approximately a $30,000 savings. And we're not paying them. They are. Correct. Uh, well, um... My personal opinion, I guess it doesn't count, but we'll see how long somebody wants to come here and work and not get paid here, get paid there. We'll see how long they want to come and do that until you may wind up having to hire an employee here. Well, but Bar Barbara, if I could maybe clarify it. So the employee will be an employee of Farmingdale. Yeah, it's Farmingdale's employee. But Howell will reimburse Farmingdale for the services that Howell uses. So for whatever time that we use with this person, we will reimburse Farmingdale. So, and we're going to save $30,000 by doing this? According Supposedly. to our professionals, they say we are. Oh, well. All right, because it's my, it's my concern that this employee may get a little fed up or tired or whatever, wants to be paid by both townships. I, I, I would believe that it should be just transparent. It shouldn't be an issue for the employee at all. Okay. Well, 
Okay, I'm fine. I'm, con I'm just concerned about the heavy tax load here with 50,000 people, and you get a ta heavy tax load with the tax office coming in, and people, you know, whatever, you're going to have more of a heavy tax load here than you do in Farmingdale, and what happens on heavy tax load days? Do you cut people in half? Well, but the thing is, it's not that we're cutting anybody in half. It's that we still have staff here. Okay. That can handle it, hopefully. Yes. Oh. Ma Mayor, I have yes, a quick sir. question. Um, Brian, the employee is completely aware of the arrangement, correct? That's correct. Okay. Right. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. <coughs> Tina Smiley, Carroll, New Jersey, uh, Charles Street. Um, do we know the name of the employee being hired? Yes. His okay. name's Al Jardine. G A R D J A R D I N E. Was this position put out, posted for multiple people to be able to apply for it? Yes. From Farmingdale already? Yes. Okay. Why is Howell not hiring this person and Farmingdale jumping on us since we're paying eighty two thousand and they're paying fifteen hundred? Well, we cannot hire a tax collector right now because we have one named statutorily. They had a vacancy, so it just made sense for them to be the lead agency with this. So At the end of the day, the money is the same. Why not do this for one year and not for, why for four years and switch it over? There are certain requirements as part of the statute for this act, uh, this pilot program, that we need to keep this in effect for a minimum of two years. Okay, so why not do it for two years instead of four years? That was a request to Farmingdale. Okay. Will this person be entitled to yearly raises, um, stipends, whatever else? <coughs> that would be a question you have to ask Farmingdale, as it's their employee. Okay. If they give the raise, it's not going. We're paying eighty-two thousand, whatever it was in the contract. If they give a raise, that's their. That's going to be their job to pay that raise. No, ours would increase proportionately. So we are giving Farmingdale the opportunity to control what this person makes. We have no say in it. That's correct. Why would we, a town this size, give up our ability to make our own decisions? I mean, that means everything you do up here, all your, all your caps that you put on your salaries, means absolutely nothing. You're washing your hands saying, here you go. Personally, I didn't vote anybody into office for you to sit here and pawn off your duties on somebody else, and that's what this looks like to me. We are one of the second biggest town in Monmouth County. Why are we giving up our rights to hire who we want, how we want? No, the, do we have any say in the qualifications of this employee? I've been working with Farmingdale towards setting up certain requirements and even sat in on the interviews. But shouldn't that be in writing? It must be this. What if this person decides to leave after six months and farm to hire somebody else and it doesn't have the same qualifications, the same experience? I mean, where does that leave us? It's a statutory position, so the state dictates what they're uh, required to have. But we can also make our own requirements. When we sit and we interview somebody, we can say, okay, I like this person better than this person because this person has experience in a larger town or this person has experience... Uh, 10 years experience, this one has two years experience. We will not have any decision making of any of this. Farmingdale can just say, this is who I'm hiring. This is who you're stuck with. Correct? Yes, that could happen. So my thing to council is, don't give up our rights to, cre to select our own employees. We need to have oversight over what we have working here. You can't fix something if you have no control over it. If there's a problem, yes, they, you're going to have two people going together and creating, but it's taken out of your hands. You have nothing to do with it. Second largest town in Monmouth County. Who would ever hear that we don't have any decision making on an employee that we're going to pay 95% of their salary? If it means waiting until the tax collector leaves, then we wait till the tax collector leaves and hire somebody. But this should be our responsibility, not the responsibility of a town that's probably one of the smallest towns. And trust me, I love Farmingdale. I grew up there since I was two years old. I, my mother still has property there. I love Farmingdale the way it is. I have no problem with that. It's just 
we need to take the lead in this. We should not be giving out our rights to make our own decisions. I'm sorry, it, it, we pay too much in taxes. Farmingdale pays the less tax worse. Mm -hmm. Now, we go to 30,000, we're saving 30,000. Is that 30,000 saving because the current, the current person is making 110,000 and the new person is making 83,000? Is that where the savings comes from? That's a bulk of it, yes. So whether we hire them personally or Farmingdale hires this person, we're still saving 30,000 no matter what. I can't speak for that. I don't know what they would negotiate for if they were coming to work for us. Okay, but <clears throat> if they didn't negotiate it. Similarly, just like we have a shared service for bulk pickup with Farmingdale, where we're the lead agency, they don't have any say in what DPW workers we hire, no. nor who we assign to it. That's part of a shared service agreement. You know what? We are paying the bulk of this. We, this, is no, this is no favor to the taxpayer of Howell. This does not do anything for us. None of our shared service agreements that you have passed, I even looked at the other one with Farmingdale with Public Works, the one with Cold Snack. We sit here and we put these shared agreements together and Howell never creates a savings for any of these shared agreements. Shared agreements are supposed to come back and be beneficial to both towns, not Howell picking up and taking over the responsibility for another town. Cold Snack got plenty of, uh, they, they got rid of eight employees. They got plenty of savings. What did we pick up? We picked up that we're gonna do their work and they're just gonna pay us what we need. Same thing with Farmdale. We do their work, they pay us what we need. When does a taxpayer of Howell make some sort of gain on sharing our services? These towns wouldn't be able to do this if it wasn't for us. We should be getting something from it. If we're not getting it, how can you, how can you vote on it? This is not good for the taxpayers of Howell. It's very good for the taxpayers of Farmingdale. I mean, $1,500, they pay $1,500 of the salary, we pay $82,000, the benefits, the, I mean, everything, we pay everything. Are they in our, are they in one of our unions? No. What is their benefit package? Do they have direct 10 or do they have direct 15? Tax collector like, cannot be in a union. Okay, so. Statutory position. What is their benefit plan then? Do they get the direct 10 or the direct 15 that the Howell employees get? Again, this is not a Howell employee. You would need to contact Farmingdale and ask them what they offer. Well, you should know this if you're making this agreement. Well, you're asking about what's mandated. We priced it based on direct 10. That's what Farmingdale offers. Okay, so this employee is also going to get a better, better benefits than what our own employees get. How do you think the employees of this town is going to feel knowing that you circumvented the system in order to get another employee in here to get direct 10 while they're all paying for direct 15? I mean, there's so many little minuscule things in this. This is not even ready to be voted on, I don't think. There's so much more that needs to be done. You're not saving anything. We could hire this employee on our own and save the same $30,000 and then let Farmdale use it for the four hours a week, which makes more sense. And we, gain, we have control over this employee. We have control over raises. We have control over everything there is. What if Farmdale next year decides, oh, let's give him a $50,000 raise? Don't say it hasn't been done. Come on. This is not a good shared service, and this is not beneficial to Howell. And I really hope you look at it and take consideration for what actually, I read this contact forward, backwards. This, we have, we are giving up every right. And I'm sorry, I did not vote anybody to give up my rights as a taxpayer, how my taxpayer money is being spent. So if you vote yes to this, you are giving up every right of every taxpayer to decide how that money is being spent. So I hope you think about that. Is there anybody else to come up to discuss this? Okay. I'd like to end this discussion.
So we would like to table it at this time for full council. Would the intent to, uh, be then to put it on the very next agenda? We'll need a motion to table in a second. Can I have a motion? I'm just looking for the date on the next meeting. I will make a motion to table until the next uh, meeting of August 13th for us to deliberate at that point in time and make a final decision. Second. Roll call, Mr. Russo? Here. Deputy yes. Mayor O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes. Okay. Now we have hearing uh, of the citizens and the public comment section. Brad Kelly, 615 Fort Plains Road. Can you get closer to the mic, please? Patricia Wait. is Brad Kelly, 615 Fort Plains Road. Howell. Um, I'm coming here today to discuss the West Farms Road project and to make council aware of certain things that are going on at that site that were not discussed or were totally different than what was discussed in every single West Farms meeting I've been to. So for the first st start, the fire hydrant is not on the Walters Group site, which it stated in their plans. It's across the street um, on the other neighbor's site, um, directly across the street from them. That's not where the fire hydrant was supposed to be placed. I'm thinking that the fire hydrant was placed there due to the fact that when the United Water or American Water, I'm not sure what the company is, um, started digging for their water lines to be put into place, they had to stop and get machinery to pump out the water so they can continue the work because the groundwater level is so high. That was discussed several times in the West Farms Road Council Engineers and experts advise that it was not wetlands and that this problem would not occur. Well, the groundwater is not going to go into their sewer systems. It's not going to go into their drainage basin. It will go onto my property. I have a side yard of 300 feet directly next to this affordable housing. Um, their property line and ground level was raised four and a half feet higher than my property line and ground level. Their water is now, as we speak, draining into the little bit of variance in between my lot and their lot, bringing the sand that was brought to the site, that zero dirt in, zero dirt out, means they should not bring six, seven tandem loads of dirt onto that property. There should not have been sand brought onto that property. That is now coming down into our variance area and draining into the variance area, which will eventually drain into my septic system and my leach field. When the trees came down, both my neighbor and I experienced high water tables and high um, leach fields due to the, just the trees coming down in that location, okay? There was an oil tank that they dug up. It sat for six weeks on that property, taped off. 25 years ago, there were three asbestos shingles found on my property when I was doing construction. The inspector of Howell Township kicked my contractor off my property kick the workers off my property until I could have somebody come down and investigate three asbestos shingles. But yet, contractors were moving dirt and walk it, working all around the dug up, I don't know if anybody needs to take this, the dug up oil tank. 
fine it had sand in it. But my feelings is all construction should have been stopped until the township contacted the DEP and somebody looked at this oil tank. Nothing was done. I sat and watched it for five, six weeks while the trucks drove around and moved dirt all over the place. I'm patient. I'm trying to wait. But I see everything that was discussed in every West Farms meeting coming to light. No one listened, wanted to listen to the townspeople then. We were called anti-Semitic by the former mayor, News 12, New York News, when everything I came to the meetings to, to discuss is now happening to my property. Here is a picture of their property, three and a half to four feet higher than the ground level, with the water, as you can see, coming down into the middle of my property. Can we see those, please? This is the lakefront property that was there before they brought in six tandem loads of dirt to fill this area, which zero dirt in, zero dirt out was the agreement the township made. And I do have many more pictures that I could supply if needed. Um, I have conversated with the contractors on site that are moving the dirt. So I am well aware that our, there is water issues over there. I'm well aware that the perk tests were done on the driest area of the property, not the wettest area of the property. And I'm going to have major issues, as well as my neighbor, with our septic systems and our leach fields in the future. And I don't plan on paying for that due to improper zoning and forcing something down the townspeople's throat because it's affordable housing. We all know it was a bad decision. And it's now coming to light in my property. The middle of our properties will be swamp. It will be mosquito infested. My well is on that side of my home. So the Walters group, I am sure, will lay chemicals down to control the mosquitoes. Now this is 300 feet of my side property. Will endanger my well. Mosquitoes will endanger my family and my livestock that I have on my property. My horses, no one in the council ever walked the Walters Group property. No one knew I had horses. Howell Township demands a 50-foot mound all the time in between livestock and residential. I was told I couldn't have that. So there we stand. Um, let me just check my notes and make sure I got everything. Oh, and they're not only Will I have swamp land down the 300 feet of my side property? Their drainage basin is right in my backyard on that property line. So you are surrounding me by swamp and water. My well is going to suffer. My septic tank is going to suffer. And my leach field is going to suffer. All things I brought to the town's attention, all things I was told I was anti-Semitic about. This is a problem and this is an issue. And I need something done. And I don't understand why the DEP wasn't contacted. I don't understand since what, this was such a hot item in Howell Township. Townspeople signed petitions. <coughs> we fought against this tooth and nail. Mayors were not reelected. Councilmen were not reelected due to this issue. But yet inspectors from Howell Township are not mandated there weekly to see what's going on. Twice a week to see what's going on. We just hired a town manager, 185,000 a year. He does not see the urgency to make sure that there's inspectors out on this site, making sure the Walters group follows everything. I don't understand what's going on in this township. When 25 years ago, three shingles were found and everyone was kicked off my construction site. 
and told they had to leave until we were contacted and resolved it. That was 25 years ago. And that was a home that was falling apart that I refurbished in Howell. I moved to Howell 25 years ago in an agricultural area. Not a, not a residential area, not a development. The area I am in, agricultural, I believe it's an acre or possibly two acres per home. This monstrosity is being put up right next to my house. This property was zoned commercial. I knew I would get a strip mall eventually. Strip malls close at night. Strip mall would have been, the back would have been facing my property. So I would have dealt with delivery trucks and possibly employees having cigarettes. Now I have approximately 200 people staring into my backyard at all times. Now I'm worried about my horses. They wouldn't give offense or anything. Now I'm told by the manager of the property that they might be putting up a fence, but I don't know. So I'm going to have swampland all around my home, not to mention my property value going down because now I'm next to affordable housing. So what is the township going to do for me when my leach field fails and my septic tank fails and my well comes up dirty and I can have no longer drinking water because they gave Walter's group a failing system. That, that system they're connecting to for their water and sewer, I'm still locating the paperwork I got years ago. It was a failing system, and it could never be run down Fort Plains Road for taxpayers. Excuse me, Mayor, that's been over five minutes. But yet, they're getting water and sewer, and my leach field's going to be destroyed. My septic tank's going to be destroyed. And if they continue to decide to put chemicals, eventually my well will be destroyed. And I don't have access to any city water and any sewers because the Walters Group put an end to that with their circular system. Nor do I want city water because I don't want to pay it. But that's where you're putting me at. Five, ten years, you're going to tell me my well's no good, my septic's no good, and my leach field's no good, and I'm responsible? It's not going to happen. Um, I don't understand why the DEP wasn't down there stopping everything immediately when that oil tank was pulled up, and so why the township wasn't aware of it. Are we aware of the oil tank? They received a permit to remove the oil tank. Why were they allowed to move dirt? around and continue on the construction site while that oil tank was still present? Because the oil tank was cordoned off, taped off. They had it sit there until the reports came back and it was disposed of legally. I don't know what happened to your three shingles 25 years ago, but I can tell you what happened today and they did receive a permit from the Fire Bureau to remove that tank. Uh, what about the dirt? What about the zero dirt in, zero dirt out? Uh, I believe seven tandem loads of dirt. I was told by the workers it is certified, but that's not what was supposed to be happening. So there was an error in some of the grading. They did require some additional fill. Uh, I don't have the exact numbers. I have uh, planning board engineer is handling the inspections. Uh, we do do daily inspections out there. So I know that you said that we're, we're not, but the consulting engineers are out there daily and weekly uh, reviewing the site work. They were out there reviewing the water main installation, the sewer main installation. That is all being done by New Jersey American Water's contractor. Uh, that is not the developer's contractor. That's actually the water company's contractor doing the water and sewer install. So Howell Township is aware this is a zero in Zero dirt in, zero dirt out, and there's no problem that they're bringing in tandem loads? But they've received a permit for the revised plan to haul dirt. And it's okay for Howell Township to allow them to raise their ground level four feet higher than their neighbor's ground level? The ground level that you're referring to was on the approved plan at the planning board. So this was vetted by the planning board and their staff, which I don't sit on but that was all vetted out and those plans did not change from the time they were presented till now. 
Well, unfortunately, zero dirt in, zero dirt out. They're using dirt to fill the lake and the groundwater. That groundwater will find its way out, and it will seep out onto my property. I can't speak to that. Oh, I can, because all the engineers that promised everything in the world, nothing's coming to fruition. Sorry. Well, I, did, I do believe you are receiving a fence. That was part of a deal you cut with I, the contractor, I was told. Uh, n no. The last meeting, the attorney told me I would get no fence. The building manager who spoke to my husband said that was ridiculous and that I will get a fence. But no fence has happened. Well, you typically don't put a fence up while it's active grading and construction, so I... I was told today that you'll be receiving a... Said they were putting the fence. There's no grading being done there. I was told today that you would be receiving a uh, vinyl-coated chain-link fence with slats in it to... Today. ...block the view. Really? No, I was told... I was told today. You were told like today. I s That's convenient. Okay. That's convenient. So... Like I said, we have a today. whole consult... This we have a consulting engineering firm that does all the inspections for us. I am not involved in the day-to-day -day operations of their site, whether you think I should be or not. I don't think you should be. I okay. think inspectors should be down there, and they're not. The inspector was there today because he's the one that came back and told me about it. So They're not there on a regular basis. Well, I have the reports and the pictures to beg to differ. Okay. All right. Um, just so you know, uh, my leach field and septic was certified, checked out, and fine. My well is being checked out and fine. So if those things changes, I will be looking to the township and Walters group to rectify. My neighbor also will be doing the same. Just to put you on notice and make you aware that there are major issues there. I'll be going to the planning board and the zoning board as well with my information. And the only thing I ask in the future when you guys are rezoning near agricultural areas, that you think about that and you maybe change the zoning to more of a farm zoning or maybe some kind of in-between between farm and residential because agricultural is not residential, not developments. We are there because we want to stay semi-rural. And I think you need to take into consideration in the township, when you make zoning changes, to take into consideration those agricultural areas that have horses, that have different farm animals, that are allowed to have those. That's my request. I don't want all this happening to anyone else in the town. I don't want them to have to go through what I'm going through right now, watching what I'm watching, knowing what I was told by attorneys and experts, knowing that it's not true. So that's my request. You think of a larger variance area for your agricultural areas when you're making zoning changes. Thank you. Abraham Chasanoff. Good evening. My name is Abraham Chasnoff. I'm at 20 West Boccio Lane. I'm not here to talk about the uh, ordinance that you were uh, going to um, have on first reading tonight to, uh, to uh, repeal uh, Chapter 188-151. And I'm also here to talk about what I think you probably uh, consider the reason for your um, proposed repeal. On May, uh, in May of uh, 2017, the master plan was amended. And I think Mr. Russo voted as a member of the planning board to amend that, um, to make that amendment. In July of 2017, the board, this council, 
voted to amend to, uh, an ordinance 017-21, which amended the SED section, uh, so zone, all of the SED zones in the township to eliminate asphalt and cement manufacturing. Not only to eliminate them, but to prohibit them. As you know, because you've received letters, the zoning board in June granted a variance to build a, uh, an asphalt plant on Yellowbrook Road. Uh, that was done on June 24th. Has the board considered, has the council considered filing a prerogative writ action in the Superior Court to have that overruled? But we couldn't address that. It's, it would be under the attorney-client privilege. What did, I don't understand. You can't answer whether or not you... Whether or not we're considering to file a prerogative writ action would be protected by attorney-client privilege. Well, I urge you to consider it if you have not yet done so. You have 45 <coughs> days from June 29th to file a prerogative writ action in the Superior Court to overturn the action of your zoning board, which flies in the face of what all three of you in different capacities voted to the disallow. You had 10, we had, there were 10 days after the publication of that ordinance or, or of that um, variance uh, for people to have appealed the, uh, the grant of the variance to this board. Has, has the board received, the council received any appeal? We have not. Well, I suggest to you that the failure to appeal to this council is a vote of confidence that you all have failed. Because if we could rely upon the council to enforce its own ordinances, we would have done so. But we were not sure that you would I'm have sorry done. to interrupt, but I'll tell you, as long as I've been here and for years prior, there's been no appeal of the approval of a devariance to any council. But you failed other very, you failed other votes If that's your interpretation, well. I think it's a mischaracterization. It's just typically not done. I, I understand it's not done, but it is a, it is a possibility. It is a, and now you want to remove that opportunity for members of the public to appeal to the council that has enacted the ordinance to correct it. I would ask that you consider filing that action <coughs> and that you uh, consider also not introducing this ordinance and continuing to allow the public the opportunity to file its appeal to the council. Thank you. John Darty. Sorry, I'm a little slow of getting up here. No worries. Uh, my job. I, I, the reason I came up is just to talk about the appeal, not to conflate it with the LNL situation. Uh, my thought is that, you know, the public should have an opportunity to pay at a reasonable fee uh, to the mayor and council, and also giving the mayor and council an opportunity to state its position on whatever the matter might be. Uh, you know, if you take that away, people will really feel that they don't have the opportunity. I, you know, I don't really uh, care that this hasn't been used in years. 
the fact that it's there is one more chance, at least, when that opportunity arises. And it, it could be a proper, proper decision for the council to make to eliminate the, the uh, rescinding of the appeal. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Barbara Dixon. Mayor and Council, Barbara Dixon, 6208 Piazza Vittoria, Freehold, New Jersey. I'm going to, I spoke to Mr. Herman outside. I'm going to tell you the same thing I told him. Uh, thanking you from me and from the villagers for paving Wyckoff, for part of Wyckoff. It's been badly needed for years, and I know we were part of HUD. We should have gotten it before Ford Road ever got it, but at least you paved part of it. And when they finish digging up the Rutgers farm, taking 400 feet off the Rutgers farm and hooking that road up to Edinburgh and making a UE and everything else on Halls Mill, um, they're, um, they're uh, going to pave, I guess, the rest of Wyckoff and fix the bridge because the bridge is in bad need of repair. It's cracked. The roadway's cracked. And um, every once in a while, you get a you get a, a transit bus driving down uh, Wyckoff, and they're not supposed to because it's a four-ton weight limit. And one of these days, one of these buses is going to go right through that bridge and go right into the water. So, um, so I, I just hope that you know when they do the Wyckoff, the rest of um, the Rutgers farm and rebuild the road, that they'll repave the rest of Wyckoff. I also going to bring up something else that I did mention to Mr. Herman slightly. At the village's entrance, there's the Havnanian building in the front of the village's entrance on Wyckoff. In the back of the Havnanian building, there are two doctors. There is Dr. Petku and Dr. Grill. Petku is a, a, a um, primary, Grill is a podiatrist. And many elderly people in the villages go to both doctors. They're supposed to get the parking lot, that little parking lot paved. It was dug up. There's heavy asphalt, gravel, and holes all over it. You can't walk without holding on to somebody or something. They cannot, for some reason, get the guy who started to pave it or dig it up to come back and do it. So I am telling you that this is an emergency that I would like Hal Township to immediately get involved in because it's a matter of life and safety of not only the villagers but other people and Dr. Petku and Dr. Grill's patients. That they, 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 they can't have this parking lot or get a hold of Havmania and tell them to get up, get up off their butt and get it done. I don't know, but somehow something has to pave this little parking lot. It's a very small area, but both doctors <coughs> have their patients going into it daily, all day long. Mr. Herman? Uh, it's a private site plan. It uh, was built decades ago. Uh, the only thing we can do is look at it and see if there's an opportunity to enforce the maintenance aspect of their site and see if we can get them to fix the parking lot. It's not a current site plan. It's not under a bond or anything like no, that. So we will go inspect it and see if we can make contact with the owner and get them to do something about it. Havdanian, I'm sure, owns it. They Petku, do. Petku. Um, Havdanian owns the property. Havdanian owns it. But the doctors know, just lease this space. Right. But if you would go in the back of this little parking lot and look at it, I have to tell you, Havdanian is not a good landlord. The grounds, the bushes, the everything. You, you would think that somebody would want to keep a doctor's properties neat. It's a nightmare. It, it's like looking at your city lot. 
the bushes are, 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 need to be torn out, everything needs to be redone, and obviously Havdanian doesn't care. So, but it's not safe. Please, I'm asking you, somebody do something, get involved, talk to these doctors, talk to... Well, so I believe we're going to send someone out uh, to take a look at the property. Is there anything, okay, is there any, thank you, is there any emergency, anything that can be done through Monmouth County, the Sheriff's Office, the Board of Health, anything that can be done at any agency to force this parking lot to get done? Because the guy dug it up, and I understand he couldn't come back and finish it. Well, it's still not dug, it's still dug up. It's a private site, so this is not something that's going to be under the jurisdiction of pretty much anybody but us. I, I can't tell somebody to go no, do it because Barbara says so, right? I'm so it's that, tough. Absolutely not. It's, it's tough for us to, to generate any kind of work order for them to be required to do it other than saying they're not complying with their site plan. I'm just bringing it to your attention that this is the problem. And we will look, and absolutely. Exists, and th this, is, this is what exists on that little parking lot that two doctors and a lot of sick patients use every day. I'm writing the email to my staff as we speak. Thank so you. I always ask, and like I said, if it's possible, the Board of Health or some, because it could be a Board of Health issue too. If these poor people can't get in that lot or fall down and get hurt, that could absolutely be a Board of Health issue. Thank you very much. Thank you. Tina Smiling. Tina Smilek, Charles Street, Howell, New Jersey. Um, I just want to start to say um, this is the first time we've only had three council members, which does present a quorum, but I just want confirmation. Now, even though you have a quorum, you need all three of you to vote to approve something in order for it to pass. If one of you votes no, it does not pass because you need, is that correct? That is correct. Yeah, it depends on the issue. So for an ordinance, uh, you need a majority of the full quorum, so you would need three or five votes. It says majority of full council. So you would need three or five on an ordinance. And yes. on a resolution, I think you need a majority of the quorum. On a resolution, is, I just wanted to put it in. I just wanted to get that straight. Right. I didn't know which it was which. Right. So ordinance is majority of the full council. Resolution is majority of a quorum. Correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, so did tax collector, the COA concept escrow funds that we're giving back, is this because we didn't put them into our, we didn't put them into our COA? Yes. That, that's correct. They posted concept uh, meeting escrow funds. Okay. Um, 9A.24, um, the contract to them. Demolition the Fort Plains Road by John Blewett. Um, why is that getting demolished? That house was um, foreclosed on by the township due to non-payment of taxes. Uh, the t uh, property has fallen into a state of very bad disrepair, and the actual entire front of the house has fallen off. How about the two houses on Burgerville Road? Those are still private. They're so, still privately owned? Yeah. They're a mess. I know. We're going to okay. send them after them again. Okay. And just keep in mind, we hope that once we are done with the demo of this property, we're going to ask the council's authorization to sell the property because it's a single family lot in a two acre zone on a conforming property and there's no reason for us to own it. And it's residential? It's residential. Okay. We could use money. <laughs> okay. 9A.29 the other public works, um, the agreement with Farmingdale, same problem. Howell Township does not get anything out of this by doing this. I know it helps Farmingdale, which is a nice thing, but we, the taxpayers of Howell, also need some help. So I would just like you to look at that, and of course we want to help, and I would say look at Colts Neck again too, because of course we want to help them too, but a shared service agreement is meant to help both towns, not just one town. Um, 9A.35, authorized execution 
for the deposit agreement with New Jersey American Water. This is just saying this has to pass tonight because this means we will get the million dollars back. So we won't be spending 3.5, we'll only be spending 2.5? Yes, that's correct. That's, that's the intent of this agreement. Okay. And we have to do that tonight because we waited so long. I well, wish because we, we went back and forth with the attorneys for okay. months, making sure that everyone was airtight on the agreement. Okay, developer agreement with Eagle Oaks. What are they doing? That's the townhomes at Eagle Oaks. That's the ones that are already under construction. Oh, they're already going up? Yes, the ones on Cranberry. It's, it's not actually directly related to the Eagle Oaks golf course. They call it townhomes at Eagle Oaks. So why is this being done now and not when it was started? Because it's revised. And what were the revisions? Uh, there was a change in the plan. They received a new approval, correct? That and there's a, a new entity involved. In right. It, so new ownership entity. So it's all standard. Not building any more? No. Taking any more trees down or anything? The whole site's <laughs> already cleared. Yeah. So whatever they have is correct. Okay. Um, and same with the other development agreement that we're authorizing. Right. If I, I think that one's for what Just three residential units. Yeah. So they want to build three residential room at, units. And this on was Alexander. this was from 2008. Yeah, the approval was 2008. They're just getting started now. Now, how many acre lots are they? Do they are they conforming to so many acres per lot? I don't remember the answer to that. I mean, how do you how do you expect council to vote on something? Do you, does council know what this agreement is about? that you're voting on? So this is another old one that was in front of the planning board for years and it was subdivision of two parcels. I think they're approximately one point something acres each. Uh, there's already an existing residential structure on that. The developer's agreement is for the construction of three others. Okay, but they should know what exactly the agreement is if they're voting on it, even though it was approved before. The agreement was circulated. Yeah, they, they all have it. So they all have it, so they, so even I just didn't know, know it off the top of my head, that's all. So you all know what you're agreeing to by passing this, correct? And, and keep in mind, these are standard developers agreements we do for every development. Yeah. It's basically to lock the developer in so they don't change anything. My thing is, I just like to know they know. So, well, okay. Um, capital Equipment Leasing Program. Is this, once this passed, this is just first reading? Yes, this um, is just introduction. Did we not purchase a van? I mean, a uh, 20 passenger transfer van in the last two years? This, um, the equipment that was um, included on this, uh, it's not the final equipment list. So um, once the equipment list has been finalized, um, that's the amount that we would submit to the County Improvement Authority to actually go and finance. Okay, but um, why are they voting on something that isn't final? Um, the County Improvement Authority has a specific schedule um, as far as coordinating 20-something um, uh, towns with their meetings as far as introducing and passing these same ordinances. Um, so in order to basically, you know, be included in the County Improvement Authority program, um, we chose to uh, include all the equipment that, 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 that was requested at the time, um, it's not a finalized list as far as what the township will be financing for, but in order to take advantage of the County Improvement Authority's program, um, we needed to submit something to, to so the program. So we weren't ready, so we made this up in order to get move forward. We didn't make it up. It was the request by the department heads okay. um, as far as what was submitted at, at at budget time, um, that list will be pared down. So as far as what the final final list is, as far as what the township goes to 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 uh, finance, that will certainly change. But in order to be included in the program, we needed to go by their timeline. And the Monmouth County program, they have a better credit rating, so we get better financing. The county is AAA rated. And we only get to do, do this once, once every, every two, two years. years. So Correct. if we need something, it's better to get it this year than it is to get it next year. As far as equipment, uh, they also um, have a um, pooled, pooled financing that they do on a, um, on a, uh, on a yearly basis, which, which we can look to you know, for, for financing in the future. But as far as purchasing lease equipment, 
um, that is a program that is that is done every other year on the odd years, and we obviously, because of their AAA credit rating, choose to choose to go through um, that as far as financing goes, because it, it's definitely the the town can get a good rate, but you can't be something that's AAA rated. Which I just wanted to make a point. I don't know if you guys know that it's every two years. So if we get the best rate this year, some things might be able to go through, some things might not. But um, even if we pull it down next year, maybe this year. Um, how much? I, I have a question pressure? though. So just arbitrarily, we take X dollars, right? So let's call it a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. We at the end find that we only need seventy. Correct. So we're basically putting a place marker in for the hundred, and then going back and saying, "I don't need that. Correct. I need why." Correct. We will need to finalize the list at some point prior to go when the county improvement authority goes out to market for these bonds. Right. Um, but yes, in order to facilitate the program, we did need to submit something to them. And who needs an air conditioning unit replacement? Where are we doing that? I think that's the library. Library? I believe that was for the library. Library. Okay. Okay. And I guess as far as effect, it doesn't matter what it's going to affect the budget for next year because we don't really know the pricing, and we'll amend this for the next final vote. Correct. I mean, I have an estimated amount um, as far as uh, what's been provided based on what we submitted to them. But as he said, that list is most likely not <laughs> – the, the final list, so any estimate that I have would be most likely inaccurate. Yep. And then we, we still have some coming off, too, right? Because if we had five years lease before, there's some coming. Correct. I mean, as far as the amortization schedule, um, depending on how much equipment is included in there, they, um, they use the weighted average of all the equipment that is in there. You could have three-year, five-year, seven- and ten-year equipment on there. So some of the series could be a seven-year amortization, some is an eight-year, nine-year, but yes, in, in theory, something that we did back in 2011, 2013 should be coming off the books So that shortly. might be good for council to know is how much we're going to spend, but how much is also coming off that's going to... Exactly. It's more of the net effect is, is more right, correct. It's, okay. it's, it's not as onerous as far as what we're gaining and, and uh, coming off. Um, next question is regarding, does anybody look at the bill lists that come out every 15th and 30th of the month? Does council look at them? If it's emailed to me, I read it. I read everything. Do they get the bill list emailed? Yes. Yes. Okay. So here's my problem. Personal clothing. I'm noticing... We have two council members that got jackets through. Does is every council member get a jacket? I don't even know that. I didn't, Does get, every, I didn't get a jacket. No, no, I didn't either. Okay. So there was a request made by two council members for uh, a Howell logo jacket. Uh, we placed the order for them, and um, we were reimbursed by those people, those okay. council members. Yes. Where, where do I get one of those? I can take care of that for you. <laughs> Um, I would like to see you all working together. I mean, I know there's issues, but let, if you want to all get T-shirts, all get T-shirts. Be uniform to work together. Look, at least present yourself as working together and being able to work together. That's all I ask. Um, don't put it through taxpayer money. Um, it's not proper. It's not proper to pay for with your campaigns. This is your personal thing. If you want a jacket, you want a shirt, you want, I don't care what you get. As long as you're paying for it and the taxpayer isn't paying for it, I just please remember the taxpayer is all I'm asking. Um, also, what's with the three season jackets for $150? What employees get three season jackets? How many do have them for $150 each? Certain contracts call for uh, employees to receive jackets, for example, DPW members. Okay. So they get, they get three season jackets. I, I can't quote you their contract off the top of my head, but yes, they're provided outerwear for all seasons. And then since your contract coincides with 
I guess the Teamsters get it because your contract coincides with the Teamsters because you're getting $150 work boots and a $150 jacket. I didn't get a $150 jacket. Well, that's what's written on the bill list. When? It would be probably the beginning of the year. I have the stuff. It was you want to email it to me? I'll review from it. a vendor in Tom's River. And it actually was thirty dollars more expensive than where the rest of everybody else purchased it from before. We had a problem with previous vendor that couldn't handle embroidery any longer. Okay, so your so previous vendor couldn't handle the embroidery any longer. That's what I said. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. <clears throat> Tina, before you go on, I just want to clarify something. Um, the two jackets were ordered through the township because. They go to this one place that has the, uh, I'm going to use the wrong term, or, the or. disc or whatever to make the appropriate logo. So it's done through the township, and they were reimbursed by a private check. But it doesn't work that way. Council members are not supposed to utilize pers for personal effects any part of township employees. You can go there yourself and hand them a check and say, I'd like it, and, they, and you know they have it on duty, but you should be going directly through them, not through township purchasing <laughs> procedures. I was not advised of that, but... I'm just saying it's, yeah. it doesn't look right. It's not an ethical thing. And like I said, I think you all should have a shirt. I'd, I'd like to see you at Howell Day being uniform and being, you know, let people know who you are because I think it's important that people know who you are. I mean, it takes a lot of work to do what you do, and I give you a lot of credit. I don't always agree with you, but I give you a lot of credit for standing up there. And I just want to say just let's follow it personal, you know, keep it on personal level, and please just try to work together. I just wanted to make it clear that Township was uh, reimbursed for that. Yep. Both jackets on a personal check. Yes, I know. Okay. No, it was on a campaign check. I have a copy of it. It was a campaign check. Excuse which me, is also Mayor, it's been five minutes. I'd like to request a three-minute <coughs> given extension. Please. So I'm basically done. That's all I had to say. But um, no campaign checks. Know that work together, be the people that we need you to be to run this town, make the decisions we need you to make, do what's right for the taxpayers because it's important that, you know, we want to see great things in Howell. And you have the ability to do great things in Howell. Take the responsibility, make it, make it your own, and take us where we need to be in order to get back what we ha once had before all the stuff was going on. And that's all I ask. All right, thank you. Thank you. Eileen DeMauro? DeMayo, I'm sorry. It's M-A-Y? I-O. Oh, I. Yes, uh, five cobblestone court in Howell, Glen Arden. I've lived in the home for 23 years. Unfortunately, I have to sell my home due to finances. And I've been trying to sell my house now for almost 10 months. And I've lowered the price considerably. I've been told by my realtor, and this is my second realtor, I must convert to gas. I'm having great difficulty selling my house. Nobody wants oil. So I'd like permission to open. It's right in front of my house on the cul-de-sac to open it up so I could put natural gas in my house. Both my neighbors have it. Somebody else in my development just recently put it in. And I spoke to Mr. Herman a couple times already. I wrote a letter of hardship. Yes, yeah, so um, she has a request for the moratorium. This is kind of a tough one for me. She received the letter last year that we sent out ahead of time stating that we would be doing the road work and that if you were going to convert to natural gas, do it ahead of our road work. Unfortunately, we paved the road. The work was not completed. She's trying to sell her house uh, and now wants to cut the brand new road open. Um, I, I've, you know, th these are very tough for me to, to grant because I hate seeing our brand new roads cut open. Um, we have done them in certain circumstances in the past. We did one in Glen Arden recently where their furnace uh, actually did break and we verified that and they wanted to replace it with natural gas. We granted a moratorium waiver 
um, I believe two months ago. Unfortunately, it's one of those no good, te go good deed goes unpunished because now we've had multiple other requests. Um, shockingly enough, I did receive actually two phone calls this week stating that they heard someone was going for a moratorium and were opposed to granting the moratorium because they didn't want their brand new road cut up. Um, I've actually never received phone calls like that, so I don't know how that started. From me, I'm at work every day. I, I don't know, but uh, that was the first time. So, you know, it's, it's really up entirely to the council to grant these waivers. I, I would also like to say that the road was paved the end of October. Unfortunately, my husband lost his job a month later and I've been trying to sell my house for almost 10 months. And that is the only reason why I'm selling my house because if I don't sell it, I'm in jeopardy of losing it. And I didn't tell anybody that I requested. I don't even um, talk to anybody there, so I don't know, it wouldn't be from me. And if I could find out when, the sooner for me, the better. So how does the, the road get repaved? He's asking a thousand dollar deposit from me um, to hold, plus a three hundred and twenty five dollar permit fee from the get, you know, to, so the gas company could open it up. And he wants to hold the thousand dollars for three months until the gas company puts a secondary seal on the street. Which all of that is move out of state or move out of the Monmouth County area. You you can't. You said. No, no, I, he's requesting, and I said I wouldn't be opposed if that's the only way I could do it. Well, that is our standard practice when we do grant moratoriums. Uh, the standard road opening fee still applies. We do take a secondary $1,000 bond, which can be posted in cash. Uh, that bond is placed in an escrow account until the company that does the opening comes back and repairs it to our satisfaction. Uh, once they do that, they can request the escrow funds be returned, and we would pass a resolution authorizing the return of the check, uh, and then Mr. Palazzo would send the, the escrow funds back. So that is a standard practice. Um, unfortunately, you know, roads like this, it'll be a, an infrared repair, so the trench will be dug, it'll be backfilled and filled with base course asphalt all the way up to the top. Uh, we typically request that it settles for three to four months because all trenches settle. So after three to four months, we ask that they come back and restore it with an infrared treatment on the surface, which basically cooks the existing asphalt with a big heater, uh, and they rake and place new asphalt back in with it, re-roll it, and it's a patch. I mean, it's never as good as the original mat. It is a patch. It depends on which crew does the patchwork. Some crews are better than others. Um, but it will forever be a patch. It's entirely up to you. You are aware it's on the agenda this evening, correct? Of course. Yes. Okay. Would I be able to get a decision? When the vote is taken, vote? Ab absolutely. Okay. You, will know it, you will know at that time. Okay, <laughs> thank you. That's it then. Uh, Mayor, may I? Yes. Um, Mr. Herman, we typically took the $1,000 to put it in escrow? Yes. In these cases? Okay. Because I know in the past we have, um, you know, looked at extenuating circumstances and um, allowed this to happen, you know, the road to be opened. Although I know everyone receives a letter saying that there is a moratorium. I do understand that there are times that there is an extenuating circumstance. I just wanted to be sure that the $1,000 escrow was a typical procedure for us. That is correct. Okay, thank you. Jeffrey Bassett. <clears throat> I am Jeff Bassett, 27 Laurel Place and 4881 Highway 9, where I own the Chick-fil-A. Oh. First of all, thank you all for your service. Thanks for coming out to the Chamber event tonight. Saw some of the staff there. It was a great event. It's a great town, a great community to be a part of. My wife and I bought the Chick-fil-A two years ago. 
Uh, and in January, we bought a house here in Howell. And so that's really why I'm here. Um, because we bought a house on Lake Louise, such a beautiful place in Howell Township. And as the spring and summer began to come, all of a sudden, we watched weeds growing up and up and up. And so I looked online and looked at some of the history of the lake and found at one point uh, how Township was looking at dredging Lake Louise. And so I'm here to ask if that's still a possibility. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so a few years ago, we actually did look into dredging Lake Louise. Uh, the council did some preliminary authorization for us to hire consultants, go out and survey the lakes, determine how much material would need to be removed. And at the time, we came back with preliminary numbers uh, for both Aldrich and Lake Louise. And Lake Louise uh, was almost $5 million to dredge. So Aldrich Lake at the time was, I believe, just over $3 million by the time we were done with the, with the fees and the dredging work. So we made a decision. The decision was we picked the lake with more houses around it. That's, you know, there's 25 or 30 houses around Aldrich Lake that would be impacted, better access for the public, uh, rather than Lake Louise. So we had to make a decision. We couldn't afford to dredge both. Um, we bonded for dredging that year, and we did not bond for any road improvements because it's pretty much one or the other. Um, if we were to bond, five million dollars to dredge Lake Louise that five million dollars would be let's say 40 roads that we wouldn't pave instead and the council has to look at it from a business point of view saying would we rather pave 40 roads or rather bite the bullet and dredge all, uh, Lake Louise so you know these lakes don't get better they only get worse as time goes on they fill in more they get more invasive uh, invasive species of plant life and Last year, uh, we had actually proposed, actually I had proposed as, a, as an idea, spraying in the lake. I, I had spoken to a few lake companies that specialize in, in treatment uh, work, trying to control some of the lilies, the fanwort, the bladderwort, which are all the invasive species in the lake. And we received a price for $12,000 to treat the lake two times during the summer in order to uh, attempt to kill and prevent some of those invasive species from spreading. Um, I actually had sent that request, or I'd sent that proposal to our Lake Restoration and Wildlife Committee, at which point I was basically told, no, they don't want to do that. Um, what was the reason? They want to see it dredged. Um, after explaining to them it was $5 million to dredge it or $12,000 to spray it and try to control some of it, I got pretty much a tongue lashing, um, that I don't know what I'm doing and that spraying won't solve the problem that dredging needs to be done. While I agree dredging does need to be done, it's a $5 million decision versus a $12,000 decision. And if $12,000 controls a problem, I think that was a more reasonable approach. Um, however, the Lake Restoration and Wildlife Committee did not agree with me, so we did not move forward at the time. Um, we were potentially looking to do it again this year, but with the budget passing rather late, uh, we have not authorized anything at this time. So it, it's really a, a monetary business decision. We could try to do the spraying again, which requires DEP permits, a properly authorized individual to do it, which would be a consultant. Uh, and they could spray the lakes and hopefully control the weeds. That's not going to affect the dredging. It's not going to affect the uh, amount of material in the lake. That still needs to happen. But, you know, we already bonded uh, or set aside funding authorization for the bridge and dam replacement that's going to occur there shortly. We actually are coming down the home stretch with the county because we authorized a, an agreement to replace the dam and bridge. So that will happen, I'm assuming, next year based on the county's timeline. Uh, but that doesn't solve the dredging issue. So, you know, I guess the, the council, you know, needs to decide, uh, do they think ideas like spraying would be a good thing to help control some of the weeds, or do we just do nothing and let it sit the way it is now? Well, obviously, uh, doing nothing is, should not be the option. <laughs> and if it's $12,000 to see if it, why not try it? 
that was kind of my thought too. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, you certain, go from the least. Expensive. Unfortunately, certain groups didn't agree with me. Let's say. But do you do you would need approvals from these groups to do it, or what? no? You try to keep these groups involved. Um, you know, you, you kind of respect your elders and say, "Hey, here's an idea. What do you think?" Uh, unfortunately, those people kind of said no. So we said, "I'm there's but only they so much I can to do." Leave it alone and let it just still become overgrown. I think. The thought process was, well, if we just say no, spraying won't work, the council will have to dredge it, and we'll do it. Oh. So, Mayor, if, if I may, um, my house is on the lake, and if I had a vote, I would love to see what the spraying would do. Still keeping in mind that I think dredging needs to be done, and I would love to be a part of that process of how we find a way to get the dredging done sometime in the near future. Well, I, that has to go, that's a big number, so it has oh, to I come to us for number. us to that's have the I'm discussion. Saying. Future. Yeah. We'll take that under advisement. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Herman, I realize um, that the West Farms Road project, uh, much of this is within the DEP and other uh, regulatory people. Is it possible to, um, well, actually, no. Would you please see if some of the things that were brought up this evening um, can be somewhat controlled? I realize that probably when the project is done, there won't be this flooding, but in the interim, while the project is being done, Someone's being flooded out, and it sounds like it's pretty bad. Um, so I'm concerned that while the project is, pr is going on, that we may be hurting citizens. So can we check into this further, and you can get back to me, let, or get back to us, let us know, uh, you know what this looks like, and what can we do to mediate the issue and to uh, you know, be a friendlier neighbor with this project? Absolutely. I mean, this is the first time this evening that we've heard any of these complaints. So I very clearly remember her stating that these are the things that were going to happen, and she's here tonight to say that they did happen. So I, I've heard her in the past. I, I personally have not. So I don't know what the what the comments were back in the original meetings. I, I don't go to those meetings. It was mostly toward, uh, in the planning board. Okay. Uh, obviously, I don't uh, I don't attend those. But uh, as far as complaints. Received to date, um, the only complaints we had were traffic due to the closure for the installation of the water and sewer mains. Um, we did receive numerous calls on that, basically saying how they just didn't want to go around the detour. Um, that work is now done, and they're off the road. So hopefully that phase is complete, and they won't have to deal with that uh, anymore. But as far as the site work, you know, like I said, we do have our consulting engineer on site you know, a lot, multiple times. Well, she's lived right there. I understand that. So I'm just saying that it's not that there's no inspections. There is. Uh, I will follow up tomorrow with our consulting engineer and find out what's going on and find out are there problems, are there grading issues, are there water issues. You know, the groundwater issue is not something that's unique to this project or her situation. Agreed. We have high they groundwater everywhere. It. Well, they, the, the plans that I just looked at while she was speaking – are exactly what she says. They are filling it. That's exactly what was shown on the original plan going back multiple years. To make years. it higher, though, yes. than the properties on the on both sides? Yes, and there's swales in between those. Well, all these and those swales go yeah. to the east to the stream corridor in the back. But, of course, those swales will be in place when this project is completed. So if we can just see what we can do to make this project more manageable to the people. 100%. Then, uh, we I would appreciate absolutely it. absolutely talk okay. to them and find out what's going on. Okay. And Thank you. See if there's something that's going on that's incorrect. Okay. I appreciate it. Okay. Would you like to do the consent agenda? Um, sure. Uh, I'd like to make a motion. Uh, 9A2 through 9A41. Wait, you got to take out 9A45. Oh. We're moving. Okay. 
984, 995, 926, 27, and, and 9825. And then 9825. I'll second. Roll call, Mr. Russo. J just give me, I'm sorry, I'm very sorry. Just give me one second. So, resolution R19234 9A 29, we were tabling. 29 was a separate one. That's an agreement that has been renewed annually for many years from what I've been instructed. We've actually revised some of the language because in the past, uh, Howell was not recouping all their money. Um, we were actually paying to dispose of Farmingdale's bulk waste where the new agreement has them covering that cost. Okay. And then the other one. I believe it was 9A1 that you were looking to table. Yes, I left that out of my motion. Go ahead. Sorry. Mr. Thank Russo? You. Yes. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes. I'll make a motion for 9B1, uh, 9B2, 9B3. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, 9B, 9B1 only, I beg your pardon. I'll second. Mr. Russo? Yes. Mrs. O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes. I'd like to open this portion for public hearing on ordinances. I'm sorry, can, can we make the appointments? I, I just didn't oh. in, put them in because I didn't have the Go means. Ahead. Well, 9B2 um, is shade tree. <coughs> so 9B2 is an appointment to shade tree, which is your appointment, Mayor. Yes, I don't remember the name. I'm I sorry. have it. I have do you it. have it? Vidal Lavoy. Do you want to? I just need a motion and. I'll make a motion to appoint Vidal Lavoy to the five year unexpired term to the Shade Tree Commission. Excuse me, we don't need a motion on that. It's the mayor's appointment. The next one, 9B3, we will need a motion on because it's council appointment. I'll make a motion to appoint the member to the Municipal Alliance when your unexpired term expiring 12, uh, 2019, Jennifer Gasshaw. I'll second. Mr. Russo? Yes. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes. So I'd like to open this portion for public hearing on the ordinances. Okay. Ordinance number 0-19-34 introduced and passed on first reading on 6-11-19 and published according to law is now being taken up for further consideration of public hearing. Affidavit of publication of this ordinance in the Asbury Park Press issue of 61419 is submitted and is noted that a copy of the ordinance has been posted on the bulletin board of the municipal building and that copies were available to the general public upon request. Title of ordinance, an ordinance of the Township of Howell, Monmouth County, New Jersey, creating Chapter 252, entitled Sewer and Water, Article 3, entitled Water Service, in Freewood Acres of the Revised General Ordinances of the Township of Howell. I'll make a motion that ordinance number 01934 be finally passed and adopted and that notice of its passage and adoption be published in the July 19th, 2019 issue of the Asbury Park Press by reference to its title only. I'll second. Mr. Russo? Yes. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes. And we said we were tabling this. 0 19 35. We were tabling for full council. I opened it, Barbara. Nobody came up. 
You're yelling at me and I did it. <laughs> A motion to introduce ordinance number um, 01935, first reading by title to order the same to be published in the July 19th, 2019 issue of the Asbury Park Press, together with notice of its introduction and passage on first reading by title, and that it will be further considered for final passage after a public hearing at meeting of the Township, of, Township Council to be held on August 13th, 2019 at 7.30 p.m prevailing time in the municipal building. I'll second. Title of ordinance, an ordinance of the Township Council of the Township of Howell repealing chapter 188-151 entitled Appeals of the Revised General Ordinances of the Township of Howell. Roll call, Mr. Russo? Yes. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes. This is for introduction only, correct? Yes. 11-2. A motion to introduce ordinance number 01936 on first reading uh, by title and to order the same to be published in the July 19th, 2019 Asbury Park Press together with notice of its introduction and passage on first reading by title, and that it will be further considered for final passage after public hearing at a meeting of the Township Council to be held on August 13th, 2019, 7.30 at the prevailing time at the Municipal Building. I'll second. Title of ordinance, ordinance authorizing the guarantee by the Township of Howell, New Jersey, or payment of principal and interest on the capital equipment lease revenue bonds series 2019 Howell Board of Education project of the Monmouth County Improvement Authority. I thought we were the one before I'm that. Oh, I'm You're so 35. sorry. I'm sorry about that. You're on 36. An ordinance authorizing the lease of certain capital equipment by the Township of Howell, New Jersey from the Monmouth County Improvement Authority and the execution of a lease and agreement relating thereto. Roll call, Mr. Russo? Yes. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes. 37. Motion to introduce ordinance number 019. Uh, 37 on first reading by title and to order the same to be published in the July 19th, 2019 issue of the Asbury Park Press together with notice of its introduction and passage on first reading by title and that it will be further considered for, for original, for final passage uh, after a public hearing at a meeting of the Township Council to be held on August 13th, 2019 at 7.30 prevailing time in the municipal building. I'll second. Ordinance authorizing the guarantee by the Township of Howell, New Jersey, or payment of principal and interest on the Capital Equipment Lease Revenue Bonds Series 2019 Howell Board of Education Project of the Monmouth County Improvement Authority. Roll call, Mr. Russo? Yes. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes. Motion to introduce ordinance number 0, uh, 1938 on first reading by title and to order the same to be published in the uh, July 19th, 2019 of the Asbury Park Press together with its notice of introduction and passage on first reading by title and that it will be further considered for final passage after public hearing at a meeting of the Township Council to be held on August 13th, 2019, 7.30 at the prevailing time in the Howell Municipal Building. I'll second. An ordinance approving the acquisition of easement rights in portions of the properties located at Block 144, Lot 128, and Block 144, Lot 114 by negotiated purchase or eminent domain. Roll call, Mr. Russo? 
Yes. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes. Is there any unfinished business? One thing, Mayor, I, I just want to uh, congratulate the Howell North Little League on their win over Ocean. I think it was a couple of weeks ago. Um, they are advancing into the, into the next round, but they should get a, a congratulations from the township and the council for a job well done. Howell North actually beat my Little League team, Howell South, back in the day. Um, so it's good to see that they're still doing well. And uh, hopefully they're going to make, and I know they're going to make us proud uh, going into the future. They're a, a good team. I spoke to one of the parents in Jersey Freeze uh, over the weekend, and they're really amped up. So looking forward to uh, what they're going to do. And we also had discussions about farmer's market, which I thought was excellent that we're going to be starting that. And just a, a thank you to the Howell Chamber for their expo tonight. It was very well attended by all the vendors. A um, great deal of the public was there, and it was well received by everyone. So kudos to the Howell Chamber. Our next meeting is Tuesday, August 13, uh, 2019, executive session at 6.30, regular session at 7.30. I take a motion to Motion adjourn. to adjourn. Second. Mr. Russo? Yes. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell? Yes. Mayor Berger? Yes.